Hey everyone, this is Mars uh, with my second video of the day. Um, I showed off uh, my last video. I showed off a bunch of bound volumes I bought, part of a collection. Part two of that should be coming this weekend. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to post a quick video. I went to, uh, before uh, I went into surgery at the hospital, uh, we had a show, I mentioned it in one of my earlier videos, uh, the St. Louis Winter One Day Comic Show. <clears throat> It was uh, put on by a couple of friends of mine, Eric Meyer and Steve Jones, who are collectors in the St. Louis area. Uh, you can look up, there's, they're having, the first one was so successful, they're having a second one in August. And uh, if anyone who's in, you know, within like a 100 miles or so of St. Louis, it's definitely worth your time. Uh, you can look up STL Comics on Facebook, and uh, they'll be providing updates about guests and vendors. Um, <clears throat> it was a really nice show. It had a, a different... A bigger selection of vendors than we usually see in St. Louis. We have a regular show, a couple regular shows, and uh, you know, about six, seven times a year, and it's usually the same faces. Every once in a while, you get a new dealer, but it's usually the same guys with the same stock, you know. So, uh, but it was just nice because we got some uh, some new dealers from uh, around the Midwest. Uh, one of my favorite dealers, and has been for several years, is a dealer named Leroy Harper, out of Kentucky, and he always has a uh, wonderful uh, selection of low and mid-grade Silver Age books that are cheap. And uh, I went straight to Leroy when I saw he was there and bought some books. Uh, I also bought some toys. I'm not a big toy collector, but <clears throat> I used to be. I'm a big fan of Godzilla and the Toho and Dai monsters. Godzilla and Gamera and Ultraman and that kind of thing. Um, I found a dealer who had a couple of these vinyls. I took them out of the bag. Uh, normally 80 he was letting them go for 40 So uh, I used to have a large collection of M1 and Marmot uh, Godzilla vinyls. I sold those just about the time I went to divorce. But these were so cheap I had to pick them up. I, I love these vinyls. I love Marmot and M1. They tend to make their vinyls uh, less realistic and a little more like a, a vintage toy from the 70s. And like this Minya. I love this Minya. It's so ugly and goofy. And this Godzilla. This is the Godzilla from uh, Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. He's even got... Uh, you can see here how his eye is burned out. That happened in the movie when Hedera threw some sludge in his eye and burned his eye. So I had to pick these two up. He had a couple more. I may try to pick them up. He's got a local shop uh, around here. So I may try to track him down and get the uh, other two I wanted. So I want to show those real quick. And then I just want to show you the comics I bought. I didn't buy a whole lot. Uh, I think these were all, oh, mostly all from Larry. Uh, I bought some from Steve, too. I didn't bring that stack. I'll have to remove that stack, too. But anyway, here's what I got from Larry. I'll just go through these real quick. These are all less than $5 or less. And uh, this is kind of my bread and butter. These are the books I just love to read. So you see they're all pretty much all DC bronze. And, uh, and uh, some silver DC here. We got all the Superboys. Uh, some Swamp Things. With Bernie Wrightson covers. And then we got these Superboys with Kurt Swan covers. I love Kurt Swan. He's my favorite Silver Age artist. And uh, these books are just so much fun to read. I just love Superboy. So I picked up what he had there. And filled in some of my runs. I love uh, Jor-El covers. I love Jor-El covers and Super Baby covers, especially when they're together. And this is the difference between Marvel and DC of the era. Um, you can kind of see how Marvel got so popular. I mean, you'll never see a Marvel cover with like the Hulk in a tug of war with an old man, you know. But DC aimed their comics a little younger, so you'll see you know, stuff like this. And it's part of their charm. I like them because they're written for all ages. You know, with Marvel's aiming a little older for college age kids and high schoolers, you know, DC tried to keep everything, you know, eight to 12. And uh, when I, as I get older, these books hold just a bigger, ch a, a charm for me that the Marvels, I love Marvels, but they just don't, you know, just don't compete. My love for, especially the, sup the uh, Superman family of titles in DC. 
<clears throat> and like I said, I love these tight. I love the domestic, like Superman family covers, where it involves Lois and Lana, the love affair, and uh, you know, like Fat Lois Lane and and uh, Superboy going to court because the judge is going to award him take him away from the Kents. And this those little domestic things. I I just dig that stuff. Uh, and finally, a couple I got from Larry Abbott and Costello. I love the comedy teams. My favorite is Laurel and Hardy, but I grew up on Abbott and Costello movies. So it was nice to find these couple cheap. And so I'm collecting these. I collect the monsters. You know, I love monsters, and I love old comedy teams and stuff like that. So I picked those up. Um, give me just a second, because I forgot these, and I'll show you what else I picked up. I got these from Eric Meyer. So just a second. Okay, I'm back. Finally, from Eric. <clears throat> Eric always has a ton of uh, cheap Bronze Age books. I always am spending sixty to hundred dollars with them. Uh, today, didn't have much money, so and I spent most of my money with um, with Leroy. But he did have a few items I had to pick up to uh, fill in holes in this run. And that is the Monster Times. Eric had these for four bucks a piece. So uh, I still need maybe five or ten issues of this. But it was nice to find these that I knew I needed. And uh, if you subscribe to After Comics, he has a marvelous video going in depth about the Monster Times, the history of the, mag the newspaper, and uh, what it was like to buy it at the time. I did these weren't. I don't remember these when I was a kid. Uh, you know, it's pretty much famous monsters, monsters of the movies, movie monsters. Um, I never saw Castle of Frankenstein as a kid. Uh, I never saw the Monster Times. So, uh, but reading these, I, I found my first issue around 1980, I think, when I went to Mile High Comics on vacation. And uh, just fell in love with the publication. Uh, as After Comics says, you know, they really did a lot of uh, features on comics and stuff, too. So it was really like a one-stop shop for for the fan back in the 70s. So I picked up these issues. These were all $4 a piece. And finally this nice Bernie Wrightson cover, the all zombie issue. So that was my pickup. Like I said, if you're in the area, uh, South St. Louis, uh, it's, it's, worth, it's worth a day's drive. Um, it's not very big, but uh, you'll find uh, you know a lot of dealers with some deep stock. And uh, the next one is in August, August 13th, I think. It's just a one-day show. It's on a Sunday. And uh, like I said, go to Facebook and search STL Comics, and uh, they'll be providing updates and uh, guests and that sort of thing. So uh, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, this is my last video of the day, uh, the last show that I've been to this year, you know, the year so far. So there's a toy show coming up in a couple weeks. If I have some money and my health is a little better, I may try to make that. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.